Uh, Pauline, as I said, he's Irish, uh, but he's living in uh, in Denmark. Ne no, Netherlands. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, Netherlands. Uh, it's easy to confuse there sometimes. Uh, and and he is going to he have a great experience in the data science uh, sector. He will uh, show you how to run data projects so smoothly. Paul, I I think that you can hear me. I hear heard your voice. Yeah. Okay. What how how's the weather like in the Netherlands? Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, thank thank you very much for inviting me. I'm very excited to be speaking today. Um, very much yeah. looking forward to sharing uh, some of my learnings on preparing data pipelines. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to, because Paul needed to come here in Croatia, but unfortunately, because all the situation, uh, we, will, we will skip this for the next year, and hopefully we'll show Paul uh, how uh, very friendly Croatian folks are, especially in this community. So Paul, I will leave you to your presentation. Uh, you can uh, introduce yourself, share the screen. You have 30 minutes, 25 minutes plus q and I think people, uh, based on the previous experience, will have some questions, so please take the stage. Great. Thank you very much for that kind introduction, and thank you everyone for having me. Uh, what I'm going to talk about in this particular conversation, it's a necessary and fundamental step in the data science process, to actually get the data you need in the right format, to the right qu quality, to the right quantity, to actually help inform the data science process and help refine the models downstream. So I'm positioning this talk as the sort of very first step. Uh, I'm sure you've all heard the 80-20 rule, 80% uh, of data scientist time is spent preparing the data. In this, I'm going to talk about that piece of the puzzle but hard to bring down the 80%, so it's far less number. Freeze up the time to do the clever stuff. So a bit about me. Uh, yep, I'm Irish, uh, living and working in Amsterdam. I've always worked in the financial sector. Um, my first job was at Lehman Brothers. Uh, it wasn't my fault that the company went bankrupt. I was only a grad at the time. And after working at Lehman, I've worked in several other banks uh, across Europe usually in the data space, and I've got good experience about seeing how companies are addressing their data-driven problems, and especially in the last five years with the rise of data science, how that new capability is being used by the banks. So the, the story, uh, the backbone to this talk, the anti-financial crime team has been developed, brand new team, in a bank in Scandinavia, uh, 12 million clients across retail and corporate. They know what they need to do. The, the, they're experts from the security services, from the police services and data science experts as well. They've got a very good idea of how they can do their jobs, but they don't have access to the data. Uh, they, they simply are stopped in day one. So how to enable this team to do their jobs. There were very conflicting views to start with. Uh, some people said, well, let's just buy lots of uh, offshore resources. We'll do this work manually if we have to. Oh, just give me access to a database. I'll work it out. Uh, and a lot of noise was generated. Uh, wasn't exactly constructive. And to give you an idea of why it wasn't constructive, uh, this would be an example architecture. The firm it was around 120 years old. The IT architecture had mainframes going back 45 years. There was no control, no governance, no data catalog. If you wanted to find data, you could guess which one of 6,000 systems had the data. It was impossible to start. And if you were a data scientist, you needed to get permissions on the system. You needed to learn about the schema of the system, uh, what data quality issues there were. Uh, the 80% of preparing the data, it was probably more like 100%. It was impossible to actually get started. So that was, the, that was our situation. An anti-financial crime team wanted to investigate low-level crime, say credit card fraud or spear phishing attempts to access internet banking accounts for individuals, 
all the way up to huge billion dollar frauds where money laundering was happening using shell companies, intermediary companies. It was a difficult situation to be in. So the first step was just to refine the problem. And we agreed on three principles. The fragment architecture, absolutely key problem. If you can't find the data, you can't even start a dance as science project. Lack of control and governance. Because we're dealing with very sensitive data, people's names, people's dates of birth, how much money they have, you couldn't have full access to all data out of the box. The financial sector is highly regulated, and even in the data science division, we had to respect that regulation. And also there was an inability to find the data. Uh, if I wanted to find, say, mortgage data for Danish customers, I had to just start phoning and asking people. And maybe they might have a friend who might know someone who probably retired in 2010, uh, but it was impossible to actually find the data to even start a data science project. So it's sounding pretty bad so far. Uh, we have a team who can't do the work. We know why they can't do the work. How do we fix the problem? So the first step, we looked to remove the legacy barriers. We did standard business analysis of the architecture, understood what legacy platforms we had, pretty much them all. The downside of those different legacy platforms, mismatch formats, uh, data access problems, scalability problems. And using what we knew to be the, the wrong way, we started building and designing the data pipelines. This slide gives you an idea of what the legacy process was. Um, I'll not go through it because it's really boring. It bores me even now. Uh, but from the start to the finish, there had to be requirements gathering. There had to be an iterative questions and clarifications because there was always a gap there. That was broken down into different specification documents that needed to be signed off by a governing board before they progressed. And then you went into a very much waterfall design model. And this isn't for a big release. This is for just simply maybe building a, an environment for to look to resolve a very small data science problem. Uh, you were looking at maybe three months from starting to, to finishing. And if you're trying to react to an anti-financial crime requirement, three months is just unacceptable. The, the, the sophistication of the financial criminals can't be underestimated. They're very intelligent people. Uh, it was a race and the criminals were actually winning. Underpinning all this, legacy tools, everything was done in the Microsoft suite. So a lot of pain. But the good thing here was people who suffered the pain were keen to make a change. The second we started talking about maybe introducing a new state, they were very receptive and we got a lot of support. So what it should be, we load all the data onto a single platform. We automatically profile the data, descriptive statistics, schemas, the quantity of data, data quality checks as well. We tag the data so we have technical metadata. That's sometimes not exceptionally useful. So we tag the data so it's got business friendly terms that you now know that this particular table contains Danish mortgage information. Another table contains Swedish mortgage information. And by having the data in one place, tagged, profiled, it's useful. So now for the prototype, you can start a lot sooner. And we can start iterating, working through the data quality issues, and get to an output, a prototype output, a lot quicker. In the previous screen, I was talking about a three month lag time. In the end state, when we actually delivered this pipeline, we were more around four to five days. It's quick for a bank. I'm sure if you worked in Silicon Valley, that's also very, very slow. 
And most importantly, we were able to move to production rapidly. So that's what it should be. And then this is a bit more detail on how we addressed it uh, from bottom to top. So at the bottom, we were taking in all the data, structured, unstructured data. Storage is cheap. We just sucked in all the data. If we didn't need it right now, we might need it in the future. We'll just take it all in. Uh, to do that, we built up repeatable patterns uh, connected to all the legacy systems. There were five main types of legacy systems and we just ingest the data as quickly as possible based on what the source system could support. Built data quality pipelines based on what the data quality requirements were. They could differ in area. And we, to answer the, the problems around sensitive data information security, it was locked down. Uh, there was row and column level security access. So that helped uh, get any conversations we had with the internal security team finalized, they were happy with the, the new platform. One of their main concerns from the security aspect was having all the data in place, sounds great, but now you have one attack surface for a bad actor to come after, so security of the data was key. And then having these ingredients in place, we were able now to free up for data exploration, uh, answering that problem, where's my data in 6,000 systems? You now have one system to come to, you still have to search for the data, of course, but now it's a smaller problem to solve. We can set up advanced analytics, uh, transform the data, search, create APIs to inform downstream systems. Uh, we had some data science teams running TensorFlow uh, off the back of this data as well. Um, equally, we also were just working with uh, teams that were doing client evaluations, mortgage churn analysis, we were able from this platform to service all the data science needs. So just recapping on those steps. Load the data. Catalog the data, absolutely key. You can put all the data in one location. Sounds great, but if you're not spending the effort to catalog the data, it's a mess and you're just recreating the old problem on new technology. Secure, critical. Make it searchable and shareable in a controlled way. And most importantly, useful. Uh, I've definitely heard people say use the term data as if it solves all the problems just by having data. It's a, a critical piece, agree. But having good data doesn't necessarily equate to good data science. You still need the, the expertise, you still need good theories, uh, you still need to work through the problem. Data enables you to do that, but it doesn't solve at all problems. And specifically for the anti-financial crime team, this was the platform design we went with. Uh, we, we also introduced RPA uh, to accelerate some client screening attributes. But the team we worked with, uh, they basically wanted an enterprise data warehouse with the capability to iteratively build data models in response to new findings, in response to finding new patterns in the data that suggested a bad actor was trying to rip off our customers. So these were our results. And these columns of results answered the problems that we had to start with. The fragmented infrastructure, lack of data quality, lack of ability to integrate, integrate with the data set. I know there were uh, bad actors in the system we were not able to find, which is good news, but it also suggests that there's potential for bad actors we haven't found yet. So this is a constantly evolving model. On building the platform, uh, we went for a partial on-premise Azure based model. Uh, the reason for that, there were some data elements that were so sensitive our internal team refused to allow them to be on the cloud, uh, even if they were encrypted. And as well as the data science aspect, we ended up by accident owning an operational support team, uh, creating these pipelines, uh, usually using uh, Scala. We 
could do it in the data science team, but it wasn't a good use of our time to be doing these sort of repeatable efforts. So we actually brought on some operational resources who would build new pipelines in response to our requirements, but also provide ongoing operational support to the platform. I had mentioned about controlling the data, and I think this is fundamental. Uh, I'm conscious that not every business area is highly regulated as finance. Uh, pharmaceuticals is also very highly regulated. And when I speak to some colleagues outside the financial sector, they're very surprised about the restrictions that we have with access to data. Um, you have to request access, you have to justify your access. Very often your access request is refused. So controlling the data helps in those conversations. So we catalog the data assets. We had a, a metadata catalog that was automatically populated as new data assets are brought onto the platform. And that data catalog, it was our internal Google. We could find what data was there. And we could also use it when conversations with internal audit teams about, do you have control over your data? Yes, it's all here in the catalog. We basically wanted to achieve a one-stop shopping experience, maybe like Amazon, where a user would log onto the platform, search the catalog, find the data assets they need. Because of the data quality, they can see, well, this uh, data assets usually got 99% rating of data quality, the other data asset has five. I'll go with the better data quality data asset. We built in the workflow to allow a data owner to see who had access to their assets and also respond to access requests all on a single platform. And this was happening every day. Um, we did have the capability to run the profiling jobs multiple times a day. We just decided to run it once a day. The data wasn't being loaded near real time. We just aligned the functionality to our requirements. So what I learned, we started off this program trying to solve one problem, get one team, the anti-financial crime team, access to the data sets they needed. It was a very small subset, subset of the organization, subset of data. We were victims of our own success because as we were building the platform and building these pipelines, more teams wanted to get involved and we, pivoted. It's a, always a good buzzword to use, but we, we, we absolutely pivoted based on the changing requirements. And we found that a full collection of products and services were needed to be successful. The initial plan was just to provide secure access to data in a single place. It worked well for one use case for one team. But in order to respond to the data science need, they, I think the default uh, data scientist response to how much data do you want? They say all of it. Uh, th this, this platform needed to be expanded and the, pro the products needed to be expanded. And we ended up with these eight main services on the platform. I'll just speak to each one of these quickly. Uh, I think I'm still on time. So find the data, resolves the problem of fragmented data environment. Uh, even if you're working in a relatively new company that doesn't have the 50 years of architectural hangover in, in, in a bank, um, the ability to quickly search for data, it's absolutely key. All these services were done in a low to no code way as well to make them as accessible as possible across the organization. For data access and secure data, this was absolutely key. We're servicing two main user groups in the end of this. We have the data science community and the development community, and each needed access to good quality representative data, and they had challenges in accessing proper full production data. So how did we solve that? We give the ability to create different data sets tailored to the need. 
If you were a data scientist, we could give you the data set and say blank out date of birth. If you didn't need that particular use case, you could have your, your data set. If you were a developer, you don't really need one for one production data. You need data that resembles production data that mimics the patterns that has the referential integrity of production data. And we actually uh, worked with a third party vendor to build a masking service that would on demand provide a masked data set to the development teams. So they were enabled um, and there's and when we moved to DevOps and add CI CD pipelines, uh, the ability to have representative data sets on basically a production scale were very helpful to enable those development teams. Getting data, uh, don't really need to say how important this is, but if you have the data on the platform, good for you. But if I, as a data scientist, cannot access the data, if I cannot bring it into my own environment, if I cannot make it available in my analytics tools, you haven't helped me. So the ability to provide consumption patterns from the data platform downstream was absolutely key as well. One way we controlled that was we built up standardized APIs. We could offer extracts of data if the user was authorized as well, or we could even spin up an entirely new environment that was pre-populated with the data you needed. On the transform side, we went two ways on this. Firstly, when the data was loaded on the platform, it was loaded in a raw format, a one-to-one -one match with the source system. And since storage is so cheap, we just kept a copy of the raw data always. Then there were two options. There was a self-service transformation and a productionized transformation. On the self-service side, we used another vendor tool. Uh, this one was called Trifacta that allowed business users to explore the data sets, do basic transformations that you could do using SQL, uh, you could do using Excel, but it was a point and click in Trifacta, so it was a lot more accessible and quicker to deliver. And the second pattern was productionized. In a use case where you have your data science environment set up, you know what data you need. We've just productionized an ETL pipeline from source to this data platform to your data science environment and automatically populate the data on whatever frequency you need it. And quite a few times the steps would be use Trifacta, find out what steps are needed and then give those steps as business requirements for the productionized flow. On visualizing data, uh, everyone had their own favorite tool. Uh, actually, uh, there were quite a few different visualization tools. There was Power BI, Tableau, Looker, OBIE. Um, we offered APIs to feed in those tools, and we also were looking for a tool that resolved a visualization problem of moving data and introducing delays and bandwidth issues on the platform. Um, to give you an example, when Power BI visualizes a data set, it brings the, the, the underlying data in, into a, the Power BI environment. And when we we're dealing with gigabyte sized data sets, it was cumbersome, it was slow. We looked to a new startup called Arcadia, that's I think now is being bought by Cloudera, uh, to have an on cluster visualization capability. And that was quite successful. The end result was people would have dashboards for production purposes or simply have a nice way to display results. On the serve and manage data side, these were sort of underpinning the other six. Uh, this is an ongoing process. On day one of the platform going live, we had around 70 feeds. There were 6,000 systems. And we were never going to bring all 6,000 systems on board. It would take too long. Uh, by the time we did it, we'd all be on quantum computers, no doubt. So we prioritized based on the data science team and the other business users' needs, what data should be rolled onto the platform. 
on the managed data, once again, we had to have governance and control. So administration, uh, personally, I find it very frustrating. Uh, it's necessary, but it's having that pivot point where there's between too little administration and too much administration. And in my experience, it's very easy to get into the too much administration side. Uh, we had to have a control framework over who could access the data and how. Uh, control uh, security framework. Um, initially, we went with Kerberos. Um, there was some investigation on an ABAC, uh, attribute-based access control as well, and how to have security on the data. But managing the data probably, if you try to size it, was probably the majority of our time was spent simply actually managing the data, structuring the data on the platform, ensuring that the data made sense, uh, and controlling access. Other learnings I had were aligned to strategy. Um, in this project, we ended up with a team of nearly 200 people working on it. It's a huge, huge project, consumed a lot of resources, consumed a lot of budget as well. If this hadn't been aligned to a critical strategy of the anti-financial crime team, we would never have got beyond the planning stage. Uh, a senior manager would have said simply, no return on investment, no. Because we were able to align the plan to resolving a critical business issue that had to be solved, that's where we're allowed to start in a small way. And then progressing as more people came on board, we we're able to expand. Um, so the team started with seven, ended up with nearly 200. I think this particular point is also critical, uh, show not tell. Um, in this, I'm trying to explain that it's easy for me to talk. I'm talking right now, uh, and everything I've said is based on a PowerPoint that I could have written, and you've got new evidence to see, will this work? Is it feasible? Uh, is it supportable? Would it work for me? And these are all very valid questions, questions I, I'd actually urge everyone to ask as well. Um, if anyone's ever been in a vendor meeting, uh, they'll promise to solve your problem before they actually hear what your problem is. So it's always good to be, be critical and ask the, the hard questions. So for showing not telling, it was easy for us to say on a whiteboard, this is our new platform. What made a better story was we prioritized a small use case. We brought it on, we had the data available and we populated a regulatory report it took around 20 days to do manually, and we did that in half a day. And that was all we needed. We didn't need to do a slick presentation or a sales job. We just had two figures of 20.5. That did everything for us. And meaningful KPIs. Uh, we were servicing the data science community, and my team were very demanding. They wanted amount of data on the platform, but it's easy to load data. Uh, is it useful data? Is it available? So we have to break down the key PIs to our, like number of data sources that would be available, number of data sources for certain business areas, and also the number of users, the number of uh, data science projects that are utilizing the data. Uh, using all these KPIs helped us track our progress and then see what we needed to do to iteratively improve. And definitely at one point I'd say is plan for ongoing support. This is a never ending journey. Uh, we're already planning now for what the new system will look like when we go 100% on the cloud. Uh, data is being ingested <clears throat> either at least once per day from some systems or near real time from other systems. Those systems are constantly making underlying changes to their schemas. Uh, the, the criminals we're trying to fight against are constantly refining their attack patterns. Everything we're doing is it's a it's a constant uh, evolution, and we we can never actually say with certainty today we are finished. It's today, it's the least worse it has been. Tomorrow we need to get better. 
uh, in, in that instance, this has been a very interesting project for me uh, personally. Uh, we were given a problem that seemed that there was no way out. Uh, we planned for the pipelines. We reduced the Microsoft Office based Cumberprism process to load the data, profile the data, use the data, make it very simple. And when we're dealing with such large data sets, it absolutely has to be simple. We put in place a whole organization just to provide the data to the downstream data science projects. And actually, that would be a whole different and quite longer presentation on what the data scientist projects actually did. So the piece I've discussed now is an enabler. Uh, it frees up your clever data scientist's time to actually do what they do best and not have any blockers or dependencies on bad, poor or missing data. So th thank you very much uh, for listening to me. Um, it was an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, I'm always very happy to take questions now or later, um, or even if you'd just like to chat, I'm always interested in learning what other people are doing and see how we can help each other. Uh, and I'll stop sharing the screen now. Uh, I can't hear I, you. Uh, oh, yeah. so, I'm sorry, I was muted. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's always, uh, I always forget to do that, to unmute myself. So you were uh, uh, finished before your schedule, so you were quite concise, uh, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, but no problem, leave something for the next year. Uh, so thank you for, the, for your presentation, it was quite interesting to see uh, some idea and hear some idea about how to start the data science project, it's quite important. Uh, tell me by, by your uh, uh, experience it's it's uh, quite difficult uh, in croatia we, we, we listen a lot about uh, new technology the way the data science is important and everything but we always uh, like stuck in the beginning you know uh the problem with the data there is not enough data the company is not uh taking this seriously uh what what what's the situation how is your experience in scandinavian country are are they still uh, fighting with the like like say childish sickness you know uh the same old same old i definitely agree yes um so, so the data scientists i work with they get very frustrated that so they'll, they'll be hired maybe out of university or from another company they'll come in with really good ideas and on day one they're told uh, no, you can't have access to that data. And I've actually seen data scientists leave because they get so annoyed and stressed out. They don't want to work in that environment. Uh, I think the bad quality data, it's universal. Uh, I've worked in the financial sector, but everyone I talk to at conferences or friends in different sectors, they all suffer from the same issue of poor or missing data. And sometimes I think one approach is you just have to accept it is what it is. You have to work with what you've got. But in our world, uh, I don't think that's a very good and acceptable response. Uh, so there's different approaches. If if the data is wrong, missing, I think creating a business case on why the changes should be made, that, that's the first step I would do. Uh, you have to make the people who own the budget or the senior management care. So if they say the data is bad, if I was a CEO, I'd say, OK, what's the impact? If you can follow it up with the data is bad and you won't be able to find the criminals who are trying to rip off your customers, then, then you'll start getting focus. I think the other issue is dealing with systems. It's, it's, it's basically legacy hangover in technical debt. Data scientists is a relatively new field and the, and the huge need for data. That's also relatively new. And we're dealing with systems that were built before the year 2000. They weren't designed for this. Uh, they weren't designed to make data easily accessible or offer it up in real near real time. So there does there does have to be, I think, a cultural change in companies that, to focus and center around data. It isn't a nice to have. Data directs your whole strategy. Uh, and the infrastructure side, maybe we'll have to start changing the underlying systems, and that is a multi-year journey. But I, I think. Uh, 
to answer your question, uh, the problem of data, that, that's absolutely universal and it's not an easy response. And sometimes the answer is actually, no, that, that will, not, will not get better. We'll have to try something else. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I see. I see where you're going, and it's always, you know, when I talk with, with the people from the industry, uh, they always have the same problem, you know, because uh, by now it, it's supposed to be everything up and running, and we are talking about data science for years now, and we're talking about this in the next six. The, I, I think five years or ten years ago, this was the like sexiest. Uh, uh, occupation, you know, to be the data scientist in, inside the company. We can have predictive analytics. We can better know our customers. Uh, where to, and and still we we have the problem with uh, how to implement it uh, in the company. So yeah, financial sector is a little bit better because they have uh, uh, the better numbers they show on uh, how to be successful in it. But usually it's not uh, something that is so spread. You you mentioned a little bit, but what's the importance of uh, the board to, 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 to support, you know, like a uh, data science project then should data scientists would, would be, uh, needs to be sitting in the, in, in the board as a part of the board member? Uh, is that a digital science officer or digital officer or chief transformational officer that should be responsible for that? I, I think so. Um, so I definitely believe there should be a voice for the data science community on the senior committee of the firm, uh, really to drive home the importance of what we do. But I, I think you touched on an excellent point where you have the, the headlines and it looks very fashionable to have a data scientist and you can put up some like a uh, beautiful graphics. But fundamentally, companies are there to make money uh, or well, uh, uh, certainly in the financial sector. It's very binary. Have you made money or have you saved money? And having the data science community have a voice on the board that could argue that by this we have prevented a certain amount of clients of leaving and we've saved this revenue, or we've onboarded additional clients through our targeted advertisements, that, that, that would be a compelling argument to, to justify having data scientists. Though definitely in my experience, the most commonly used data science tool, certainly in my area, is Excel and that's due to the bad quality data we're getting. Uh, so the platform I described now, uh, we're moving data on. I'd say we've got about 40% of the company's data on that platform, and we're, we're targeting 80% by the end of next year. But people are making do with the tools they have and the data they need. And rather than maybe taking a step back from suffering manual tasks and saying, maybe we need to scrap and start again and draw what the, the new infrastructure should be. Uh, but I, I, I think data science, the onus is on justifying your, your usefulness. Um, I think data science is absolutely critical. Uh, but one other point of this is if you ask two data scientists to describe what data science is, you'll get three different opinions. So actually defining what it's, it's, it's a very umbrella term, but defining specifically what you do within the, the world of data science helps non-data scientists understand. Yeah, OK, I, I hope that doesn't mean that we need like regulation of data science in some association <laughs> that need to regulate, you know, to, to see what are the, if you want to be data scientist, you need to have the certificate and you want really to talk about it yeah. uh, on this. Yeah. Uh, OK, yeah, it, it, it's, it looks like we are going to need some more time uh, to uh, make data, data driven companies and data science work in the companies. Uh, and hopefully uh, people who are responsible are hearing such conferences as this and they listen to the talks and they read uh, materials that uh, show them how to start a data science project because it, it, it is the future of the company you now because if you want to have digital business you need to know what to do with data and if you don't have this correct then it's I, I completely agree, especially in the financial sector. People are bringing their experiences, say, from Amazon or online shopping to finance. So if you if you apply for a mortgage, maybe my parents would have waited three weeks for an answer. Today, we want people who want an answer in three minutes. 
And unless we have the data science and frameworks in place to say, analyze uh, credit risk and client risk, we will never be able to get that quick response. So I think data science, it's, it's not a nice to have, it's critical for future success of your company. Okay, that's the nice line to finish your uh, interpretation of today. So thank you a lot for uh, spending your time with us and sharing your knowledge. Uh, this is just one of the topics that you can cover and hopefully next year uh, the people can listen to you live in, in Zagreb with uh, additional uh, topics. So yeah. I'd really like that and thank you for having me. It was an absolute pleasure speaking to you all today. Yeah, okay. So uh, have a great day. Goodbye everyone. Bye. Bye.